Uh, welcome back. Hope you're well. Now, uh, did you know that a &E departments handle a whopping 25 million patients every year? But of course, lots of these cases could actually be sorted out elsewhere, maybe even at home. Well, we're joined now by frontline A&E doctor Rosanna Allen Khan to get her advice. Not only are you a frontline doctor, you're also an MP. I don't know how you do it. Oh, you're, you're, you're like Aww. Wonder Woman. Thanks so much. That was the best bit of my whole week's being here. So, <laughs> oh, we're here. oh, nice. Um, okay, so um, I, we spoke earlier about uh, the pressures of, of A&E. How, how much pressure are, are they actually under at the moment? They're under a huge amount of pressure, and in fact, people always say to me, "What's the best time to go? Best day of the week?" There is no better time of the day or better day of the week. It's just busy all of the time. But what I would say is so important. People often come to the A&E department and they apologise for being there. They say, I'm really sorry, doctor. I don't want to waste your time. I'm so sorry I came. And if you need us, we are open and there for you. Please never feel shy to come because I've had patients before who have had three days of chest pain, who have sat on it because they didn't want to bother anyone, didn't want to bother the NHS, and then they came in in a full-blown heart attack. So I really want people to know that we are here. Even though we're busy, we're here for you. Can you remember it as, as, as under so much pressure as, as it is now? Is this the worst it's ever been for you? This is the worst I've seen in a really long time. I mean, you know, don't be fooled by the makeup. Uh, I'm older than I look. And I've been, <laughs> I've been doing this for about 18 years. And uh, it is significantly busier now than I've seen in a really long time. And that's for a number of reasons. Um, and one of them being that our GPs, they work incredibly hard, but the demand on them is really huge. And so very often we see people come to the emergency department who actually just can't get an appointment with their GP. Well, it's funny because I had to visit A and E um, back in December, just after I come out of the the jungle, and I've never seen queues out the door before. And they yeah. were they were out the door and down the road. And yep. I was just thinking, wow, well, these actually, in Bath actually. Yeah. And and I was just thinking, wow, these staff are incredible. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, you just can't thank them enough, you know, for the I job know, that they do. But are amazing. Um, what sort of people are coming through the door? So we are seeing. Children, adults, every age group, we're seeing people who've obviously had very serious accidents, who are very seriously unwell, and they go to the resuscitation part of the emergency department. We have minor injuries, we have children and adults. But what we are seeing, and I think I'd really like to touch on, are, are some of the real main reasons people should be going to A&E, some of the emergencies. OK, so let's go through those. You want to start with heart attack first, right? I'd like to start with heart attack. So there are lots of reasons why people can have chest pain. It can be indigestion, it can be muscular. But if people are experiencing a central pain that feels like a pressure, almost like someone's pushing or pressing or sitting on their chest, particularly if it goes down the left arm or up into the left side of the neck, they absolutely need to seek help. And one of the things people often think is that it's mostly men. Women also get heart attacks. And sometimes the symptoms can present as tummy pain and breathlessness. So just be really aware, if you do get those symptoms, call 999 and come to the A&E department. It's interesting you touched on that, because we did an item with Dr Nickett yeah. last week where she said, and I had no idea that the symptoms and heart attacks present themselves differently quite often for men and women. Yeah, they can do. And I think people look out for the typical symptoms that are very often publicised as, as being the male symptoms that we're very yeah. familiar with, without realising that there are other symptoms. So if you are breathless, if, you are, if you're struggling, if you feel any of those pressures, just come to A&E. And another really important one where time is so critical, because with a heart attack, sometimes an artery is being blocked, a vessel that goes to the heart is blocked, and that can be unblocked in time. Another, another time-critical thing is stroke. So if you're having symptoms or you find someone who um, you think might be having a stroke, there's something called FAST that we say, F-A-S-T. Firstly, it's face. So if one side of the face looks unequal to the other, um, we call that facial asymmetry. Arms, if they can't put their arms above their head, if their speech is affected, so if they are slurring their speech, um, drooling, unable to speak as normal, and T is for time. Time is everything, because if there is an artery, like a blood vessel, that is blocked supplying oxygen to the brain, if you can get to the hospital within four hours, there is a really good chance that, that, that the medical team will be able to give medication that can treat that in that time. After that window, it becomes much more difficult and unsafe. Rosanna, are those, all those symptoms need to happen together, or if you have any, any one of those, you should be going to...? I would say any one of those get to any. Is there such thing as a, as a golden hour? There is, yes. There's a golden hour, which applies to something called sepsis. Um, sepsis is when you have an infection of something in your body right. and your 
own body mounts a response to that infection. That's, that's a really normal thing. We see that in adults and children. We can get a fever, all those sorts of things. We can be hot and flushed and tired. But sometimes those symptoms are so overwhelming that it actually damages the own body's tissues and organs. And it can be really difficult to spot. But the golden hour is, as, is really related to how quickly you get antibiotics into someone. Right. So some of the symptoms people can look out for <clears throat> is feeling breathless, feeling as though their heart is racing really fast, if their skin appears blotchy and cold, and if someone has a darker skin tone, a way to look at that would be to look at the palms, mm -hmm. if that looks grey and mottled, being confused, particularly if you have an older loved one, um, if they are more confused and drowsy than normal, those, those are signs to look out for. And the key is, again, quick treatment to get the, the fluids in, and to get the to get the um, the antibiotics <clears throat> in quickly. Would you advise people if they live near a hospital to call an ambulance or just go themselves? Is there, if then you, or, or like get a loved one to drive them if they know they can get there quick. It absolutely depends what is wrong. If it is something that is a bit more routine, let's, say, not, let's say one of those things. One there. of these, it, I, I would I would call an ambulance because. The ambulance is able to yeah. provide oxygen, they yeah. can start fluids, they can start a lot of the treatment. Um, but, but, but yeah, it, it's, it's really, really time critical. Don't hold, don't hold back. Yeah. Um, and what sort of things are you seeing that you think, right, OK, you could treat this at home? Yeah, well, we see a lot of sore throats because people aren't able to get uh, GP appointments very often. Um, we see that. But then you and I have both had a sore throat Fine. that's taken us into A&E. Yeah. Yeah. So if you have a sore throat, but you're finding that your airway is blocked and, you, and you've got some of the symptoms of sepsis, of course, you've got to go to the A&E. But there are things now that pharmacies can actually diagnose and treat, such as sore throats, such as... Um, uh, sinusitis, such as earache, such, such as um, uncomplicated urine infections. So sometimes going to your pharmacy can prove even quicker than going to your GP. But GPs do an incredible job. They work incredibly hard and hats off to so them. It seems like yeah. such a good idea to, to have to let the pharmacies and let, you know, the experts in, in you know, what you can take in medication just help you out if, if you don't need to go and see a GP? I think with very simple things, they, they, they can also help with um, infected insect bites, simple things where it's safe to treat, that's a really good idea. Before we let you go, kids very accident prone, when should you be taking your kid to A&E? Oh my goodness, I've got two kids, they're always <laughs> bumping their heads. Okay. If they've fallen, things to look out for, to be concerned about, is if they lose consciousness, you mm. absolutely have to go to A&E. If they have multiple vomits separated in time, that could indicate pressure build up in their head. Mm -hmm. um, if, they, if they have a seizure, if they're more drowsy. But of course, you know, you have to apply some discernment. Yeah. But again, I see parents who apologise for being there and I say, no, never ever be sorry. It's better to come yeah. and know that your child is all right and going home safely than not to come and find yourself extra worried later on. Yeah. Oh, Rosanna, thank you so Thanks, much. Rosanna, thank great. you. Thanks yeah, for having me. Absolute pleasure. Absolute pleasure. Thank you. You might want to run away now, though, because...